And then finally, this last interview is titled, well, the headline is Netflix's live action avatar series took out how sex was in the original. <laughs> A lot of moments in the animated show were iffy. Let's talk about the recent interviews done uh, with the creators or showrunners of the big upcoming live action remake on Netflix of Avatar The Last Airbender. Not Avatar The Blue Pocahontas, but Avatar The Last Airbender. So as we all know with the history of Avatar The Last Airbender, well, at least outside of the original series, it didn't do too well with M. Night Shyamalan's uh, movie version. So there was some hope writing on this Netflix remake because first it's in the show format. So you can still tell the same stories just live action um, kind of captured the original essence of the original series in a live action TV format. And there was high hopes writing on it because the creators of Avatar The Last Airbender were brought on as the showrunners. Unfortunately, though, some time ago in 2020, uh, Mike wrote this, one of the two creators, Mike wrote this open letter to the fans saying that him and Brian are... You know, despite they were they were hired first as executive producers and showrunners, but then two years later, for whatever reason, things did not go as we had hoped. Um, it, despite Netflix saying it was committed to honoring their vision for the retelling and supporting on supporting them on their series, uh, and he just said things happen, productions are challenging, uh, and you know he kind of left it pretty vague as to why they left, but. Based on this kind of quote here, I started to reevaluate what is truly important in my life and what I want to do with what's left of it. I took some advice from Uncle Iroh. I looked inward and I started asking myself the big question. Who are you and what do you want? Well, fast forward about five or so years later, we kind of now know why or can, get, can kind of get guess why they decided to depart ways with the show. Uh, they probably got pushed away from the creative direction and then the Netflix writers, same as like every other Hollywood writer, I feel like, I don't know why they do this. They did it with Halo, The Witcher. Halo especially was atrocious. You have great, no, I'm serious. You have great source material. You have does hundreds of stories, hundreds of characters. And you just, I don't know, you slap master cheeks on there. Like, <laughs> you know, but I, I have this fear that this show will go the same way based on these interviews. So what do the interviews exactly say? So we'll pick out a couple of things here. There are certain scenes that you never saw in the original, whether it's the attack on the Southern Air Temple or the Agni Kai between Ozai and Zuko. These are things that I knew we needed to see in order to make it feel much more grounded as a live action show. Um, okay, so the first part, the attack on the Southern Air Temple, uh, I don't think needs to be shown. I think there's a great image. I don't know, or, or video. We can watch a video. Look at this scene. This is a Southern Air Temple scene. What they're saying is, maybe we should show what exactly happened that led to this massacre of the firebending, uh, firebending invaders when Aang stumbles upon it 100 years later. And he sees his, his uh, childhood mentor and friend, Monk Yatsu, dead in the middle of all this. I don't know if necessarily showing what happened is needed to do storytelling or to make it more impactful somehow as a live action show. Because when you look at the scene, there's a lot of things going on here. First, you're from the perspective of Aang, you're like coming back home 100 years after. So the impact is much more profound than having seen it firsthand. You know, because he's, 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 he's expecting to come back home to his living tribe of air nomads but he doesn't everyone's dead uh and we feel that impact through him secondly just this scene alone there's multiple dead firebenders around an old dude right who you don't expect to kill people but look at this and there's no other guy except him who was an air nomad at this battle scene he killed all these people by himself so it, it, there's some storytelling here that you don't have to tell about you just show it. So I don't know if things like that you need to show. And the Agni Kai between Ozai and Zuko. Uh, do you really need to show that? I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of already shown from his scar on the face. 
what happened <laughs> in my opinion but anyway that's one big problem i have uh so far with their interpretation of what needs to be in the show okay so another thing i did have an issue with in terms of like the tone of their netflix show was um despite it being originally a nickelodeon show they do acknowledge that it, it matured as time went on as it should because it's a journey they had to make it a serialized Netflix drama, which meant it couldn't just be for kids. It also had to appeal to the people who are big fans of Game of Thrones. And so it had to feel grounded and mature and adult in that way too. I don't want to see titties in Avatar The Last Airbender or like, you know, you know what I mean? It's just, why does it have to be as dark or gritty as Game of Thrones or Ultra Carbon? I mean, the you don't need all that to have it be a good story a good show they don't need to change anything here that's my point here why do you need to change the atmosphere why do you need to change the character makeup why do you need to do anything like that but apparently they want to do some sort of cross atmosphere between avatar the last airbender and or, or legend of korra and game of drones or something gritty like that and then finally this last interview is titled well the headline is netflix's live action avatar series took out how sex is was in the original <laughs> a lot of moments in the animated show were iffy okay so apparently uh Sokka's sexism will be toned down considerably in the Netflix show. Um, and again, the full quote is, I feel like we also took out the element of how sexist Sokka was. I feel like there were a lot of moments in the original shows that were iffy. Okay, there are entire Reddit threads about Sokka's sexism discussing how the original Sokka prior to his character journey would make remarks like girls are better at fixing pants than guys and guys are better at hunting and fighting. Okay. Um... I have a lot to say about this, but that, that, that's about it. Okay. Something from 2005 won't fly with audiences today, but that they, I think they missed the whole point of the sexism from Sokka. So obviously he's sexist at the very start. Like he looks down on the sister. He regards women as not warriors. And this actually is pretty important to his character development because the first woman he meets outside of the tribe at Kyoshi Island is and the other and the other Kyoshi warriors they're all women they they're better at fighting than him they teach him actually his sister is eventually becomes a master water bender so he needs to somehow cope with the fact that even though he is a man or boy he is outclassed again by his sister and he has to learn to accept that and then there's other uh, instances in which he realizes socially he's not he can't marry he has no hope no chance of marrying the north pole water tribe princess so there's a lot of moments where it like puts it, it just shows sexism is bad like in the entire in, in, in the entire show his his like perception of girls or guys versus girls is completely wrong he gets proven wrong again and again and then eventually like that completely goes away once he meets Toph, who is much stronger than them above like beyond technique beyond social status she's a stronger physically so everything and he grows as a character so i don't know why they had to remove that part of his character that's that's so weird <laughs> because it, it's what i don't know it's so weird they also take away the fact that he had these views because of the environment he was raised in it's not like he was just blatantly sexist he came from a world where the men were the warriors and the women were what we today would call the homemakers. He was a product of his environment. Right. They're, they're showing that, that he was a product of his environment and that's and wrong. And throughout the show, he grows and learns that that's not necessarily how things work. That's not the way of the world. And I, I, let, I think it is a pretty important piece of him because it shows his growth okay so here, here, here's what I'm, here, here's what i was talking about earlier <laughs> okay i think one of the big questions is despite all the remixing because they said it's a re, it's a remix not a cover which is again weird is the point a and the point b still the same as the original 
Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I think the state of the world and the stakes of the world are still the same. So we decided to make Aang's narrative drive a little clearer. In the first season of the animated series, he's kind of going from place to place looking for adventures. He even says, first, we've got to go and ride the elephant koi. It's a little looser as befits a cartoon. We need to make sure he had that drive from the start, and so that's a change that we made. We essentially give him this vision of what's going to happen, and he says, I have to get to the Northern Water, Water Tribe to stop this from happening. <laughs> that gives a much more narrative compulsion going forward, as opposed to, let's make a detour and go ride the elephant koi, that type of thing. So that's something, again, that's part of the process of going from a Nickelodeon cartoon to a Netflix serialized drama. This entire answer ignores everything. Like, so that's the whole point of his character. He's a 10, 12 year old kid. Yeah, he's a kid. The reason why he's even, you know, frozen in ice for a hundred years is because he ran away from his responsibility. He didn't want to be the avatar. So of course he doesn't want to go save the world immediately. He doesn't even want to face the fact that he is the avatar. He can't accept it. Um, and also, again, this gets into the whole world building aspect. If he's not going off on these side adventures we saw in the show, the original show, how much are we really going to see of the world, the world building? That's pretty important. And that's, I think, a part of the reason why a lot of people love Avatar The Last Airbender. It didn't show like everything in every super, super fine detail, but it showed enough on their adventures to where, okay, I can see that. I can make some headcanon about that sand benders swamp benders whatever um and how people live under the fire nation and so forth that's that's really cool but they're just kind of skipping out all, all these adventures and they're like you know what we're gonna make him just compulsively want to go save the world no that doesn't make sense the uh, the, the main reason why he even went to the northern water tribe in the first place was he wanted katara to teach him water bending but she hit a cap because she's not a master so he needs a master. Where do you find a master? Because the Southern Water Tribe doesn't have any more water betters besides Katara. You go to the north. You go to the north, and that's why they go to the north. W what is this? <laughs> what? I don't know. Um, just him. Exactly him making mature, mature, deci mature decisions is like absolutely weird because he's a kid. Show. He just wants to play. That's it. He wants to ignore the world. Yeah. So. They talk about bending the rules or bending the show, uh, bending the original show to fit the Netflix adaptation. Uh, again, uh, going back to those narrative liberties, was there anything in particular where you were like, no, this is set in stone. This can't change. There's a lot of things like that, starting with the characters. I mean, the characters, we had to dimensionalize them, but there are certain core. I would say there's a core DNA to the characters you don't want to mess with, whether it's Aang, like I said, his childlike goofiness, which is being ignored <laughs> yeah. his sense of humor the burden of his responsibility Sokka and his humor and his pragmatic outlook on life minus the sexism uh. Katara's warmth and her optimism those things had to carry through into our version so you start with the characters and you say what's the essence of the characters that got a big change and what's the room where we can explain it a little bit more the cartoon for as great as it was was 15 years ago and so things have changed listen to this there are certain roles I think that Katara did in the cartoon that we didn't necessarily also do here. I mean, I don't want to really get into a lot of that, but some gender issues that didn't quite translate. Excuse me? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's over. I think, it, I, think, I think the show is doomed. Yeah. They took out what... Oh, I can't. Uh, let me break this up. I don't... It, it ties in with Sokka's sexism thing, right? Yeah. Because the reason why Katara is fulfilling this traditional uh, female role within the context of both the group and her tribe is her mother was killed. And all the waterbenders were taken away from the tribe and a lot of them were women. So she had to learn from her grandmother how to probably fix pants or cook or clean. And she's trying to fill the, not just the shoes of her mother, but she's also a sister <laughs> in, a tr in, the, in the water tribe. Yeah. <laughs> Which has its own culture of determining what a male or female, th that's a pretty big focal point actually, uh, in both season one and season three. 
right? The father and the son exchange with uh, Sokka and his father. The whole warrior ethos. Uh, you also have the engagement protocol, the, the how, how you marry or how you propose in the Northern Water Tribe between men and women. I mean, there's so many things I feel like they're trying to mess around with here. The, the, the little nice details, but also the big details too. You're going to keep watching the anime. <laughs> This is absurd. They want to take what makes Sokka's character grow through the entire show away and then change what makes Katara's character growth. Right. Like, there's a reason why she's maternal. There's a reason why she does certain things. And yeah. so, same for and, Sokka. And, and His father is gone. Sense. It makes sense. <laughs> and they both grow tremendously throughout the life of the show. As well as Aang, from his carefree child nature wanting to hide from his responsibilities, which is totally fucking normal, to all of a sudden he's super mature 10 year old. I gotta save the world immediately. Because he gets a vision, which this doesn't then happen in the absurd. show. <laughs> well, it you sometimes know, happens, but like, not about that. That they wanna make a show that fans today will like as adults. The fans still, as adults, like the original show. Right. But yeah, uh, I saw these interviews. I read through them, skimmed through them, and just rereading these with you guys. I don't know. It's very concerning. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, do you, you want to give it a chance? Like, <laughs> like the Halo show on Paramount? <laughs> I feel like you consider that a bad idea that we even tried. I, I'm feeling that way about this. Okay, and they actually, the showrunners were asked about the departure of the original creators from Netflix. Um, having them leave was a blow. Okay. It's not to say that when they left, we said forget everything they've done. And really? They, yeah, they want to honor the spirit of the show that they originally created in the version, in the version we made. If you really want to honor them why do you have your own version or take on it it's kind of weird and then they said finally this is the version of avatar i would want to see as a fan so i, I don't want to make this thing about like i think people will try to make it so that it's about the actors i think the actors and actresses the casting is great video effects from the trailer at least looked okay uh my problem is oh, as usual with the writing 